Hey, Grandpa here. We're going to read from Magic Treehouse Book 8, titled Moonlight on the Moon. We're up to Chapter 5, and it's titled Hang On. So remember, Jack and Annie, we're going to take off on the moon buggy. So let's continue reading. Annie drove the moon buggy over bumps and hollows. It bucked like a bronco. I'm going through there, she pointed to an opening between two mountains. Jack held on to the dashboard. The buggy bumped toward the opening and shot through. On the other side, the ground was even rockier. Look for the full fourth M thing, said Annie, bouncing up and down. Jack groaned. Looking for anything on this wild ride was impossible. Slow down, he said. How? Try pressing on the brake pedal on the floor, slowly. Annie pressed on the brake. The buggy slowed down. Jack sighed with relief. The ride was still bumpy, but now at least he could take a good look at the moon. He had never been to such a colorless, barren place. There was no green, no blue, no red. No water, no trees, no clouds. Only giant gray rocks and craters, and an American flag. Oh, man, said Jack. That's from the first astronauts who landed on the moon. And look, a telescope, said Annie. She drove near the flag and telescope. Then she put her foot on the brake until the moon buggy stopped. She pressed a button that set off. Then she and Jack hopped out. They took slow, giant steps toward the site of the first moon landing. De beside the flag was a sign. Annie read it aloud. Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot on the moon. July 1969 A.D. We came in peace for all mankind. That's a good message, said Jack. He handed the moon book to Annie. Then he took out his notebook and pencil to copy the sign. Let's leave our own message, said Annie. What should we say, said Jack. The same thing, said Annie. But say we are the first kids. Jack turned to a new page in his notebook. In big letters, he wrote their message. Now we have to sign it, said Annie. Jack signed his name. Then he passed the notebook and pencil to Annie. She signed her name and passed the notebook back. Jack tore out the piece of paper. He put it by the flag. Today, the first kids from the planet Earth came to the moon. We came in peace for all children. Jack, Annie. No wind would ever blow the message away. No rain would ever fall on it. It would be there forever unless someone moved it. Thinking of forever made Jack feel dizzy. He shook his head to clear his thoughts. Then he remembered the time. Had two hours passed yet? I wish I had a watch, he said, standing up. We might be running out of time. Oh, wow! A moon man, said Annie. What? Jack turned to look at her. She was staring through the telescope. Jack walked over to the telescope. Annie stepped aside so he could look too. Jack gasped. In the distance, something was flying above the ground. It looked like a giant man in a spacesuit. Ooh, it does look like a moon man. And that's the end of chapter five. We'll read chapter six next time. You know, I remember when uh, Neil Armstrong stepped out on the moon. 1969, I would have been uh, a young teenager. And I remember we uh, went to visit my dad's, we were visiting my dad's cousin at that time. And he had, uh, he had rifles with real high-powered scopes on them. And we looked through the scopes at the moon. Not that we could see the uh, astronauts or anything. It was too far away for that, but I do remember that. We watched it on TV. 
that was a exciting time. Well, as Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Love you guys. Bye-bye.